Good morning, beautiful souls. Welcome to another video. We're out here on a very overcast day by the lake Atitlan and enjoying all of the beauty of life. So today I'm going to talk about this idea regarding belief systems that if it doesn't feel good, what you're thinking isn't true. So people have shortened this to say, it doesn't feel good, it isn't true. And that perhaps is an exaggeration. Or it can convey a false falsity through the wording there. So I want to explore this a little bit because if something is really the highest truth, if what we're thinking and feeling is really the highest truth, it's going to make us feel good and empowered. And there's a lot of disempowerment in the field right now that has always been there, but is really coming to the surface as people are continuing to buy into the notion that somebody above them is more powerful. They may have more access to control and directing things in the world, but you are intrinsically powerful. So, yeah, before I get into that, I want to say shout out to people who continuously watch these videos. I know at one point I said I was going to commit to making a video a day, and now a week or so has passed where I definitely, definitely have not done that. <laughs> um, I'm also doing a channeling course and hola and sessions <laughs> and um, yeah working on that and taking care of myself sometimes I don't get to oh God. I'm doing what I can to make it happen <laughs> so Somebody has also said that watching one video every day is a bit too much, and I kind of feel like, yeah, maybe that is very true, and if I did make a video every day, not everyone would watch it. So I'm really focused on the quality of content, not just making endless videos for the sake of it. Um, so everything's always changing anyway, and it's also come up that maybe um, this camera is not the best. And I am here in Guatemala where we don't have the most brilliant access to a lot of technology and the technology that is um, readily available in other places is a lot more expensive here. So bear with me when I do get out of here, I'm definitely going to upgrade all of this and I think that's just going to be nice. So anyway, back to what we were talking about, what this video is actually about. I just want to say some things. And if you're new to the channel, um, like, subscribe, share, all the things. That helps us out on YouTube a lot. So, um, if it doesn't feel good, it's not true. This has a lot to do with our belief systems. So our reality is constructed through belief systems to the extent that if we didn't believe in gravity, we wouldn't be anchored here. If we didn't believe in the common laws of physical existence, then we would shift into a higher nature. So, uh, higher and a less physical <laughs> nature. Um, sometimes those words can be deceiving as well. So, a lot of these beliefs are kind of imprinted in us as we come into a physical existence through the consensus of this reality and many others we pick up along the way. But all of these beliefs are like optional filters that we see reality through. I like to think of beliefs as these sort of lenses, like you go to an eye doctor and they put this sort of big thing in front of you and then they ask you to stare at the letters and then they switch them and they're like, does this look clear? Does that look clear? Does that look clear? And then you say, this lens is the clearest. So belief systems are much like that. You sort through them by focusing on the different thoughts that arise and they're very polar in their nature. So there's positive belief for every negative belief. And beliefs can tend to, when they're directed, um, most of the beliefs will have a lot to do with self or self's relationship to the bigger thing. So they focus on some core themes of uh, worthiness, uh, capability, and 
um, abundance or the ability to have something. So, so often we are focused on the truth, the false seeming truth of lack, of um, inability, of unworthiness. And these are some deceptions that can trick us. And it's very commonly part of our culture, and there's esoteric reasons behind that, um, why this has been so commonplace on this planet. Though, beyond getting into all that in this video, because um, I do explore it in others, we, we inherit these ideas, and we learn that we are only worthy if we ex conform to certain rules and standards. So, we have to shift into a time and space where we are totally ready and willing to question every single one of our thoughts. And instead of seeing the thought as something that is based on reality, think of the thought as something that creates our experience of the reality. So the more we do that, and we stop simply believing our thoughts, we can then sink deeper to those layers of belief. And belief is not something you will get to with thought alone. You have to tap into the feelings. Because belief is like a thought that has been so deeply imprinted that we stop questioning it. Uh, so we encounter a belief when we know, ah, okay, this is something that I have just not really thinking of, thought of. Or it's something that I just took for granted that this is something that just everybody knows, or this is something so intrinsic to reality that it must be this way. That's how we know that that thought is a belief. It's something that has been kind of thought on repeat uh, without being questioned. And so we dismantle the, those beliefs by seeing that there's many layers to it. On the top level, there's our behaviors and our actions. On a level a bit below that is our thoughts that direct those. A bit below that is our feelings. Thoughts arise out of feelings. And then at the very bottom level, there is... Well, um, there's the belief. And the belief, the unquestioned thought, the thing that we just took for granted, creates these emotions, thoughts, and behaviors, vice versa. So, um, as above, so below, the Hermetic Law, if you change your behaviors, your beliefs will in turn change. If you change your beliefs, your behaviors will in turn change, and so will everything in between. Which is why this sort of in-between sorting and sifting that we so often do with like the law of attraction sort of work, or NLP or something, it's, it's powerful, but it's not the complete picture. And sometimes that sort of work is slanted in, in an imbalanced way towards the positive side of things where, okay, we just have to stop thinking this. We have to change our thought right now. But actually, we uproot belief systems when we're able to do our shadow work. And we go very deep into those heavy emotions that are the recurring emotions, and we become comfortable with them. We let go of resistance, and we come to accept and acknowledge that I would not be feeling this way if I was not believing something that is false about myself. I just would not be feeling that way if I did not have some negative belief about myself or my relationship to the bigger picture, the world out there. So by sinking deeper into those emotions and questioning, okay, what am I believing about myself to be true that is causing me to feel this way? Then we can dig in and discover what that belief is. So we have to understand as we're doing this that beliefs are much like living entities. And sometimes when somebody appears possessed, they are actually just possessed by their own beliefs, which are, again, not originating from them, but something that they made up. It's like when you're in school and you're copying down the words or making the same drawing that everyone else is doing. It's much like that with our beliefs, that we created them but we created them because we got the conscious or unconscious impulse from the external to internalize that. So it's our creation we have to take full responsibility and also we have to give it back to the people that inspired us to create it. So I hope that makes it clear. 
Um, now, when we understand that they're like living entities and they want to perpetuate their survival, they they have a very tricky way of doing that. When we understand the way that they do that, we can actually engage with them. And we kind of have to starve them of this fear-based energy and let ourselves become very present with the fear and stop fighting it. Because again, whenever we fight the fear, we make the fear stronger. And the negative beliefs will use this fear. They will convince you that if you encounter negative beliefs, you will find out that they are inherently true. They will get you to focus on secondary beliefs. They will amplify the fear and amplify your sense of powerlessness and capability. And they may also make you feel that you will not really have um, connections or you will lose relationships or lose people in your life because without this belief, you won't have that common ground anymore. And we have to dismantle all of this and just go right for the kill with that belief. Just go right into it and be like, you're not true, I'm done with you. When we know what the opposite truth is. So we are inherently worthy beings. This is an inherently abundant universe. We are capable of doing anything we want. If there is a will, there is a way. We have all of these ideas and understandings in our world and especially in the spiritual communities because they are the most fundamental truth. And we know they are the most fundamental truth because they lift us up and they fill us with lightness. We know something is a negative belief when it makes us feel powerless and unable to move forward. We know something is a positive belief when it fills us with inspiration, a feeling of connection, a feeling of being able to move forward in the trajectory of what really works for us and fills us with a sense of inspiration. So we know whenever we're getting in touch with that feeling, we simultaneously must ask ourselves, what am I focusing on now? What am I thinking and believing about myself that's allowing me to feel this powerless and this capable? And when we recognize, ah, okay, here's the thought, here's the perspective that I'm in that's causing this surge of positive energy, we can remember that if we are ever in a negative loop, we just need to flip. We need to do a reversal. We need to find the f reverse polarity of that belief. So if the belief is I am incapable, find the belief that says I am capable. And know that negative beliefs always will have to use positive reinforcement. They will have to look for evidence. I am incapable because I don't have the skills yet. I am incapable because that person rejected me. I am incapable because yet I haven't succeeded. But positive beliefs will never use negative reinforcement. So positive beliefs will only back themselves up with more positive energy. So they will show you I am capable because I can really do anything. I am capable because I see so much evidence for other people applying these tools and doing the same thing. I'm capable because I have experienced success in so many other ways in the past. So focus on that and understand again that Anything you're feeling that is less than good is the result of a belief. So, I want to extend this now into more bigger picture issues. Because our world is in a state of uh, transformation. Our world is in a chaotic state where there's a lot of negative energy being expressed. This is nothing new. This negative energy has been being expressed for many millennia. And it's reaching an escalation because we're tipping into this point of the age of light where we can't do things the same way anymore. The energy of the planet has shifted to the positive polarity. And so all of that negativity has to come up. And we can't just be passive bystanders, which is what our religious programming has created a belief in us to anticipate is that, oh, well, if we just do this one thing, like, forgive our sin, um, ask for forgiveness for our sins, or accept this person as our savior, then we're going to ride the wave of everything just being okay. And we see that a lot in the spiritual world right now, which is totally insane. Um, though, this video, I'm focusing a bit more on the opposite, where people are, instead of um, 
blindly saying it's just going to be fine, where people are very negatively emotionally charged about the way things are. So all of these things that are bringing up a big charge in us are real and valid. So um, since COVID, this has been less of a big one because there's less movement causing less pollution. But the environmental crisis is one that has been very strongly bringing people to feel out of sync and out of harmony and feel like, oh, everything's over. Um, uh, so now we're having a lot more political things like the issues around equality and racism. And we're also seeing a lot of things around the elite deep state, Illuminati, Cabal, uh, many names, and the child trafficking rings. And beyond that, the satanic ritual abuse and the um, MK Ultra, all things related to this. So, when we discover things like this and we stop pretending that it isn't real, there is a often deep sense of shock and a sort of disbelief and can feel like a great betrayal and a reality shattering you could say and that is a natural part of the process though we can't wallow in that feeling for too long and expect things to get better so a lot of people are mistaking um, the the waking people up as doing something active about it. So to make people aware of a problem without making them aware of a solution is almost worse than not telling them anything, <laughs> in my opinion. So yes, bringing these things to the surface is important and is crucial. Though, we also have to bring with that message the right to our sovereignty and to say, we don't want this anymore, we don't stand for this, and we're going to make people aware of this. And we also have to include, you know, this compassionate approach that isn't otherifying and vilifying other people who don't believe and aren't woke yet. And we have to be very um, precise in how we do this. And most importantly, we have to remember that it is our belief about our relationship to that event that is going to create our experience of it. So a lot of people see things like this, whether it is environmental issues or whether it is conspiracy issues, uh, they see it and they're like, well, this is just destroying my world now and we live on this terrible planet and they go into a very dark, heavy place and I know people who are immensely disempowered because they have focused on these things for way too long. So it is your relationship to them. It is your belief about how that relates to you that is the greatest key. So what I believe about this that makes me feel really empowered and excited is that by remembering my intrinsic worthiness and by remembering that I don't have to play the game of those elite people, I experience all the abundance I need, all the connection I need, and all the love I need simply through sharing who I authentically am. And that's the truth for everybody. If you let all of yourself come through and shine bright, you would be so powerful and you would experience so much love and magic. So we are all at our core magic worthy incredible beings and that is the greatest deception any elite or um, secret society pulls on the collective is to make us feel as if because we're not a part of this certain elite club we are less worthy or because we are not uh, this or that we are not as powerful. Our true power comes from within us. Um, what do I believe about the environmental thing that makes me feel okay about it? Well, I believe that by doing my part in restoring people to a place of love and compassion and an awareness that we are all one, 
that as people get that, they can't behave the same way anymore. And as I help reinforce that state of remembering our oneness in those that I reach, then they will go and reinforce that in others. And once somebody wakes up to the realization that I am one with this rock here, and I'm one with the trees, I'm one with the earth, are my actions affect this, that those actions affect me, they can't keep doing things in the same way. The people that are okay with destroying the earth are only okay with doing that because they believe they are separate from nature. They believe they are separate from humanity. So I know fully that in restoring that sense of oneness and allowing it to spread, that things on that level are going to change. And all of these things are not good and positive things. But we can use them in a positive way by allowing them, uh, allowing these negative things in the world to highlight the great importance of what our mission really is and allow us to focus so clearly on that mission with full integrity and full trust that we light up with that passion of excitement that ripples out to others. So when you focus on these situations, and you are feeling something negative, it is the result of what you believe about yourself in relationship to this. It can be that you believe you are powerless to change it, or it can be that you believe that these negative circumstances are going to affect you and harm your own life, or affect those lives of others. And of course, you are powerless to change it. And I think. The powerless belief is the biggest one that causes people to feel stuck, depressed, and unworthy. And what I say is that you got to take care of you first. You've got to really level up and feel health, feel connection, express your creativity, let your body come into alignment by doing all of these beautiful self-healing practices, get your diet into alignment, get what you consume information-wise into alignment, consume only information, do only things with your technology that lifts you up and makes you feel bright, that opens your third eye and not dims it down and gets you focused on the mess. Take care of yourself and your energy will raise. And as you really understand what it means to take care of yourself, then you can take care of others. And as more and more people step into their power and realize that it is within us, within our beliefs, within our body, that our soul experiences this reality and comes to change this reality. So much greater th transformation can take place. So never buy into this delusion that it's helpful to feel bad about the things that are happening in the world and especially understand that anyone spreading negative energy about the state of this world is really in a big trap themselves and they are oftentimes externalizing their deep sense of disempowerment onto a bigger situation. A situation that reinforces the belief that they are powerless to change when actually we are all powerful to change that bigger situation. And I've gotten into some interesting discussions because I've said to people, well, just posting about this and that conspiracy alone is not changing anything. And some people don't get it, really. Uh, you have to, yes, make people aware of it, and also make people aware of what they need to do to change it. And awareness of the situation alone is not enough. You also need awareness of the actions and the energies, the frequency of love, connection, inspiration, and empowerment that's actually going to change the tide. So empowerment is the way of these times. and as we discover our, the power that exists within us and we realize that it has little to do with so many of the things that externally we've learned to place our values in, then we can take that power back and use it in ways that are really going to change this situation on our planet and on many other planets as well. Whew, okay, so believe good things about bad things. <laughs> That's the simplified, stupefied message. 
believe, believe good things about bad things. If there is a negative situation and you're feeling angry and you're feeling sad and frustrated about it, it's because you're using your energy in a way to disempower yourself. And that may be a hard message for some people. Um, anger, I would say, is something that can be transformed into empowerment. So again, back to these ideas of working with the negative beliefs. When we have the negative beliefs, we can't make the negativity wrong. We have to embrace it and love ourselves within it, drop our resistance to it, and ask ourselves in a deep way, what am I believing that is causing me to feel this way? And what is the opposite belief? If you're angry, you're believing that somebody is taking power over you, but the opposite belief is that you are infinitely powerful and you can claim your right to all of the things that you desire and you deserve. And finding the path to do that is a co-creation that involves connecting with so many other souls in this amazing time where so many are lighting up and lifting into their empowerment. So I hope you can find the inspiration and the energy to do that. And yeah, much love and blessings to you. Thanks for tuning in this video. Again, if you've enjoyed, like, subscribe, share. Let me know what you want me to talk about in these future videos because sometimes I'm running out of ideas but I base a lot of my content on what you as the viewer wants to experience and learn about and change in your life. So pop a comment, pop me a message, sessions available, blissbeings.com. It's about to rain, I guess, um, but I'll let you see the lake again. Some people really liked taking a peek around at the end of one of the last videos. garden. Oh, math got really dirty, really sandy. I wasn't expecting this one to be that long. I kind of like when it's overcast, honestly. But there was like two weeks where it was like this every day and it was raining a lot too and it was like winter and after that I got to be hotter than ever before it's kind of what it does here the way those volcanoes get the clouds right on top something so special about it right Again, like I shared in the last video, that hill is um, what inspired one of the first chapters of a book, The Little Prince. In the beginning, there's a snake eating an elephant, the very long part, and then the elephant at the top. It's quite interesting. Okay, I'm gonna go into my kitchen now. Yes. Bye-bye.